Welcome back. Uh, welcome back. Uh, the time is now uh, 9, 29, 930, and the City Council is reconvened in open session. Let the record reflect. We've been, um, we're, we're joined by all council members. We have a quorum present. And for members of the public, the City Council will be conducting the rest of its meeting in this chamber. The Park and Recreation Board is meeting in room 333, adjacent to the Mayor's office. And now the Council will take up the consideration of the first item on its agenda, which is the proposed 2015 <coughs> property tax levies payable in 2016. To do that, I will recognize Council Member Quincy to present the report of the Ways and Means Budget Subcommittee. Council Member Quincy. Uh, thank you, Madam President. On behalf of the Budget Subcommittee, I'd move adoption of a resolution approving 2015 property tax levies to be paid in 2016. Councilmember Quincy has moved um, the budget, uh, excuse me, the um, levy recommendation. Uh, is there a second? Second. Any discussion on the motion? Seeing none, I am going to have to, my battery is low on my computer. So I need to get into speaker management. It's our tech guy here. <laughs> okay. Yeah, okay. Up okay. All right. Okay. Sorry for the delay. Okay, thank you. Sorry for the delay. Councilmember Quincy has moved the adoption of the resolution approving the 2015 property tax levy. Uh, is there any discussion on that motion? Seeing none, clerk will call the roll. <clears throat> Councilmember Gordon. Aye. Cano. Aye. Wright. Aye. Bender. Aye. Glidden. Aye. Yang. Aye. Johnson. Aye. Quincy. Aye. Warsami. Aye. Goodman. Aye. Fry. Aye. Palmasano. Aye. President Johnson. Aye. There are 13 ayes. That motion prevails, and the resolution establishing the city's 2015 property tax levies has been adopted, payable in 2016. The second agenda item is the proposed 2016 general appropriation resolution for operating departments under the city council. Councilmember Quincy, will you please present that report? Uh, thank you, Madam President. I move adoption of a resolution establishing operating budgets for departments under the City Council and fixing the maximum amounts to be expended by city departments in fiscal year 2016. Councilmember Quincy has, has moved adoption of the 2016 General Appropriation Resolution establishing operating budgets for those departments under City Council uh, control. Uh, is there any discussion on the motion? So we're using speaker management. Any discussion on the motion? Any amendments? Any amendments? Am I? Yeah. Okay, Councilmember Yang. <coughs> uh, thank you, Madam President. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to move to amend uh, the 2016 general appropriation resolution by decreasing on a one-time basis the public works budget by $105,000 from the LED lighting initiative and increasing the police budget by $105,000 and reallocating $200,000 from the timing of hiring new positions cost savings to be used for CIT and procedural justice training with the police department in addition to the department's existing training budget. Is there a second? second? Any discussion on that motion? Seeing none, all in a, oh, I'm sorry, are we all right? Uh, Gordon jumped in. Councilmember Gordon, am I not seeing this? Am I? I'm, I'm having some problems. Oh, yeah. um, okay. Thank you. 
Uh, no, I, 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 sit out of our speaker management or? and start over again. No, I was. I'll uh, I'll I'll speak. I did click out because I was ready to remove my name, and it looked like there was going to be unanimous passage. I didn't oh. think we had to discuss it very well. I'll just note that, um, you know, typically I might not support um, amendments coming in like this, and I also have some concerns about the LED lighting, but especially in light of the uh, presentation this morning, and concerns that we have about the police department. I think accelerating. Um, um, the procedural justice training with the department um, is uh, is an appropriate use of these funds. So I'll support this. Any further discussion on the amendment? Councilmember Tano. Thank you, Madam President. I, I have a question. Is is it appropriate to ask a question right now? Sure. There is. Uh, can you, uh, Councilmember Blangian? Can you explain the reallocation of Two hundred thousand dollars from timing of hiring new new positions, cost savings. What positions? What departments? How is this calculated? Councilman Yang. Uh, thank you, uh, Madam President. Uh, Ms. Christensen can answer that question. Actually, Ms. Christensen. Council President Johnson, Council Member Cano, and Council Member Yang, and other members of the of the council, the two hundred thousand dollars that is represented in the motion before you regarding two hundred regarding um, savings garnered through delayed hiring, uh, there are a number of new positions recommended in the uh, budget recommendation in the police department that will not be filled as of January first. And in recognition of there being um, a portion of the position cost savings during that time in which the positions are vacant, the uh, motion would redirect those savings towards implementing this accelerated training program. Thank you for that <clears throat> not so clear answer, I feel. Um, I'm going to vote against this motion. Um, I was never consulted on this. I have a lot of questions about what kind of training this is. What is the curriculum? Who are the trainers? I know this is part of our, um, it, it says here that it's part of our procedural justice training with the police department um, in relationship to the DOJ initiative, perhaps. Uh, but this elicits more questions than it gives answers to. And I feel like um, if uh, Council Member Bang Yang was really serious about putting this forward, uh, there would have been more conversations amongst the council yeah, members right. about what this is actually meant to be doing. And um, furthermore, I just have questions in general about how much more funding down the line are we going to be asked to put forward around these training initiatives? Uh, when do we start? When do we end? What are the goals? What are the metrics? It's not specific enough for me. Any further discussion, Council Member Fry? Uh, thank you, Madam President. Uh, the procedural justice, as well as the implicit bias training that we discussed this morning, I think is exceedingly important. Um, it was a recommendation that went from the DOJ uh, to us, I believe. Uh, and this is a recommendation that would help us move forward on a lot of these uh, progressive ideals and values that we've been espousing. Um, I, I mean, th th we went through a 30 or 40 minute presentation perhaps this morning and uh, I am I'm, I'm supportive of it and I agree with council member Gordon entirely who and this you know taking money away from LED lighting an initiative is not something that I would normally support uh, but in the face of uh, some really serious issues that we're dealing with nationwide and specifically in Minneapolis um, this makes sense this does and I'm for it yeah council member Bender Thank you, Madam President. Um, I, I actually really appreciated the presentation this morning and the information there. I'm very supportive of this particular amendment. I did want to voice some concern about the number of what seem to be pretty significant amendments that are coming tonight instead of during the budget markup that happened last Friday. This is only my second budget cycle, but it seems unusual to me. As a relatively new council member, and I 
but I imagine this will continue throughout my career. I, I actually like to engage my constituents quite a lot in the budget. My constituents in the 10th Ward pay a significant amount of taxes, um, but everyone across the city, I think, um, deserves to know um, as much as they can what's in our billion dollar budget. And um, the budget, um, someone spoke, I think, very eloquently about the fact that our budget is a moral document and it really is the expression of our city's values. Um, and so for my constituents to not get the chance to know what the council was going to propose for me, not to get the chance to ask staff those questions, to you know engage with my colleagues, I think it's just a disservice to the um, whole process of our budget. And so again, I'll be supporting this amendment, but I do have um, concerns about that process. And I just hope that in future budgets, we're able to do more what I think is the typical process of bringing some of these more significant motions um, through the regular uh, budget markup process. Uh, I also want to request that we take a roll call vote on this and all of the amendments. And all of the amendments, did you say? Yes. Okay. All right. Any further discussion on Councilman Yang's uh, amendment and um, been asked for a roll call vote on all the amendments. Seeing no further discussion, clerk call the roll. Council Member Gordon. Aye. Kano. Nay. Wright. Aye. Bender. Aye. Glidden. Aye. Yang. Aye. Johnson. Aye. Quincy. Aye. Warsami. Aye. Goodman. Aye. Fry. Aye. Palmasano. Aye. President Johnson. Aye. There are 12 ayes and one nay. That amendment is adopted. Um, I'm gonna bring forward one amendment um, that's in front of you, and it's actually from myself and Council Member Yang. Uh, we move to amend the general appropriation resolution by replacing $129,000 in general fund funding for eligible community planning and economic development housing program costs with the additional levy resource from the special tax levy, Chapter 595, and increasing the department's employment and training budget by $129,000 for Summit Academy OIC's contextualized GED program. Summit Academy OIC will be required to report back to the Community Development Regulatory Services Committee on October 1st, 2016 to provide an update on the number of participants enrolled and the number of participants who have successfully completed the program. Summit Academy is um, a job training center uh, in North Minneapolis that has uh, a number of programs. And what they have discovered is many of the people that apply to um, Summit Academy do not have their GED. The GED has been uh, changed. Uh, it now has to be taken online. And it also is, um, I would say, a significantly more difficult test than it was a few years ago. So Summit Academy has plans to um, I guess you would call it dual track, uh, people who need a GED but also have enrolled in their either their healthcare track, um, uh, job training, or their construction um, uh, job training programs. And so they will take those classes while they are uh, also getting uh, and preparing and then taking the GED. So I'd encourage my colleagues uh, to support this uh, program. And uh, we will get a report back um, uh, on, by October 1st so that we understand um, the success or, or uh, lack thereof, or, but we hope they have great success with the program. Council Member Quincy on the motion. Uh, thank you, Madam President. I just wanted to uh, uh, add my support to this motion. I think it's incredibly important when we have the opportunity to uh, offer additional resources to what we know to be a working programs. And uh, certainly Summit Academy OIC is doing a tremendous job in, um, in uh, enhancing um, employment opportunities through uh, increasing people's access to uh, GED uh, uh, programs. So I think it's a terrific uh, use of resources. Uh, the source of the funds uh, is a, uh, a little known and uh, barely used uh, special tax levy. So it doesn't do any harm to the overall structural balanced budget that has been pre presented. So I think it's an excellent use of these resources and I look forward to a report in October uh, outlining how those additional resources have uh, impacted the communities. Any further discussion? Council Member Glidden. Thanks, Madam Chair. I did want to hear from Ms. Christensen a little bit more on the sources of funding this program. This is the first time I've seen this motion. I want to make sure I'm understanding if there's a reference to housing program costs. And maybe you can explain this uh, special tax levy a little bit more to us, please. Uh, 
Council President Johnson, uh, Council Member Glidden, and other members of the City Council, the Chapter 595 levy is um, also known as the HRA levy. It uh, is a special levy uh, that is um, certified to the county. It's also eligible for its own allocation of fiscal disparities. During the uh, Board of Estimate and Taxation setting of the city's maximum levy, uh, it was identified that by certifying $129,000 of city levy associated with the HRA levy would allow the city to be the recipient of approximately $125,000 in fiscal disparity distribution, meaning bottom line that about $4,000 increase in the overall impact to the average uh, or to the taxpayers of the city of Minneapolis. The 595 HRA levy can only be used for uh, economic development related activities. The motion uh, by Council President Glidden is to reduce the utilization of general fund resources in the Community Planning and Economic Development Department for housing programs by $129,000 and replace that funding with the Chapter 595 levy. And then to utilize the uh, newly freed up $129,000 of general fund levy to provide for funding for the summit OIC. So I have a follow-up question. Go ahead, follow -up questions. Um, one is I'd like to know when's the last time the HRA levy was utilized. The second question is what housing programs were reduced or what funding, I don't understand that piece of what was reduced. So what might we see, and maybe this is a program income piece, or I, I don't know, you need to explain that a little bit more, please. Uh, Council President Johnson, Council Member Glidden, there actually isn't a decrease in funding. It's merely a replacement of the source of funding. So um, by linking the appropriate eligible expenditures in the CPED department to mm -hmm. the HRA levy, it allows for an additional $129,000 of general fund to be freed up. And the last time the HRA levy was utilized? We adopted an HRA levy in 2015 of $1 million. Okay, thank you. Councilmember Goodman. Um, thank you, Madam President. So we discussed this in the CPED uh, budget markup. Um, the interest at that time was actually taking the money from the Tech Hire Initiative, um, but Eric, uh, Eric in the mayor's office spent a good amount of time educating a number of us about the Tech Hire Initiative, which is an initiative to help um, young people, uh, especially young people of color, get into tech jobs because, as I think a lot of people in this room know, uh, not like me, I'm, I'm not on Twitter or anything like that, but young people are really big into technology, and if we can help them get into a training program, um, tech jobs pay a lot. So I, we didn't think it was a good idea to take the money out of the Tech Hire Initiative, which is a job training program primarily focused on youth to get them into high paying career ladder type jobs. Um, but this GED issue is a big issue in our community and people are having a hard time moving forward if they don't have a GED. So um, I think that's a big reason why uh, we tried try to figure out a way to not take something from someone else's important program, but add this. I'll note um, we spend about in excess of $3.5 million annually on job training activities in Minneapolis. Um, these range from all sorts of different providers, um, who work with people in our community to get them into career laddering jobs. Some of them are with Dunwoody, for example. One we're gonna to discuss tonight is a building trades partnership. Um, so we spend a fair amount of money on that. We also spend a fair amount of money on youth employment and youth training in the summer jobs program. So uh, this is adding to our about $5 million we spend on job training. Uh, we take that fairly seriously and we actually grade all of the organizations that participate in job training programs and all of that information is online. So anyone can take a look at what who we give money to to do job training, how much we give them per participant, what job they get, whether or not they're successful and how long they're in that job. Um, so there's all sorts of statistics kept quite frankly including race. Um, so I would urge folks to take a look at that uh, as we add a very small amount of money to the very large number of things we're doing in the area of job development and training. Any further discussion on the amendment? Seeing none, clerk call the roll. Council Member Gordon. Yes. Cano. Yes. Wright. Aye. Bender. Aye. Glidden. Aye. Yang. Aye. 
Johnson. Aye. Quincy. Aye. Warsami. Aye. Goodman. Aye. Fry. Aye. Palmasano. Aye. President Johnson. Aye. There are 13 ayes. That amendment passes. Uh, back to the main motion, Councilmember Warsami. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I bring forward a motion uh, in the 2016 General Appropriation Resolution by myself and Councilmember Yang uh, to move and to amend the 2016 General Appropriation Resolution by reducing 50,000 in general fund one-time enhancements, funding for green zones in the Community Planning and Economic Development Department, and relocating 50,000 to the fire department, 42,000 be used for the purpose of partnering with organizations to provide youth technical training and outreach, and for identifying and securing locations that will allow Hennepin County Technical College, Roosevelt High School's multi-craft core curriculum, and Public Works uh, Fleet Division Mechanic Trainee Program to receive educational equipment, that has been leveraged through the Department of Employment and Economic Development grant. The remaining 8,000 will be allocated to the Midtown Safety Center, and I would like to speak on this. Uh, Councilmember Warsame. Can I speak on it? Yes, go ahead. Okay. Thank you very much. Now, this, this is basically uh, taking $50,000 from the Green Zones um, in the Community Planning and Economic Development and moving this money to the to, to be used to, to provide youth technical training programs for students from Roosevelt High School. Many of them will be from World 6, many of them will be students of color. And this program will allow them to do the, uh, to do a, a mechanic trainee program with the unions in order to, for them to get training to get livable, uh, wage jobs in the future. I think this is very important, especially as with the public testimonies today, everybody was talking about, uh, youth development pro training programs and making sure that our youth have the opportunities to get livable wages. The other amount, the 8,000 remainder, remain will go to the Midtown Safety Center, which basically serves a number of neighborhoods in Ward 6 and Ward 9, including Ventura Village and Phillips West neighborhood, that's in my ward, and the remainder in uh, Ward 9 with Alandro Cano. And uh, I think this is very important, and I would like my colleagues to support this motion. Motion's been made. Uh, Councilmember Cano. Thank you, Madam President. So first of all, uh, this amendment was never brought forward to me. Again, uh, the uh, the authors of this initiative, Councilmember uh, Yang and, and Warsame, uh, did not speak to me about this issue. I've had no residents talk to me about getting funding for the Midtown Safety Center, so this is kind of a surprise. Um, I will say that I've been working on the Green Zones Initiative with my colleagues for the past two years, and it was an, a campaign issue for me, uh, for the Phillips communities specifically which I know Councilmember Warsame also represents. And so the, the notion of the Green Zones uh, pilot <clears throat> project money in the Community Planning and Economic Development Department is to help us transition our businesses into the, the green economy. And uh, we've had the climate um, the climate action plan that has codified green zones as an initiative we need to move forward. Uh, we have a resolution that passed the health Environment and Community Engagement Committee a few weeks ago, um, you know, having the city uh, call out a work group to really put this concept together. So um, I just want to stress that that these fifty thousand dollars that the mayor put into her budget around these issues are connected to environmental justice, to empowering immigrant families, low income families, families of color to regain their health and to organize and work together to address issues of environmental racism in their neighborhoods. And it would impact and actually help uh, the council members' wards who are actually authoring this uh, particular initiative. So I'm just looking forward to the day that um, the misogyny on this council can end and where we can... Um, <laughs> And where, where we can, um, where we can actually all stand behind a cohesive vision for one Minneapolis for racial justice that is supported by people of color and immig immigrant people on this council. Councilmember Andrew Johnson. Thank you, Madam President. Uh, I have a question on this, or I guess I'll, I'll just put this out there. So in the mayor's proposed budget, there is $50,000 advocated for the Community Outreach Explorer Program. My understanding talking with the chief is that that uh, 
is actually uh, offering leadership development, encouraging youth uh, in our public schools, uh, high schools to enter uh, firefighting and emergency services as a career. It's actually, uh, Roosevelt is in Ward 12, um, which I know this uh, amendment actually specifically mentions. And that is one of the schools that specifically is getting that youth technical training and outreach uh, as a result of that Community Explorer program. So it seems to me like that is already in the budget for 50,000. So I'm wondering if this is an additional 50,000, how this might differ from that. And it's just really a question, so. I can, I can, I mean, I, I will speak to both uh, uh, Council Member Cano and Council Member Johnson's points. Um, this is actually in addition to that amount. So this is not, we're not replicating that amount. And again, if we're talking about equity in this city and we're talking about equity in this country, and one of the biggest things is unemployment and underemployment, and this is a specific program that's going to help inner city youth, youth of color, to get necessary training programs in conjunction with the unions so they can do the jobs that their parents do not do today. So if that's misogyny and if that's somehow, uh, you know, hurting, uh, 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 you know, people of color, I don't know what's going to help because this is actually tackling one of the issues that we have been talking about over and over again, the lack of employment in our communities, the lack of employment with regards to our children. And I think we should support this. And 50,000 50, is not enough. We should have 500,000 for this. But this is, this is a start. Oh. This is, again, again, this is, again, this is a start. And I will talk on the other issues that we wanted to talk about before, but I would like, let's support this uh, motion as it stands. Councilmember Goodman. Um, thank you, Madam President. Uh, the Green Zones Initiative has not passed the City Council yet, but it is going to be on the first committee agenda for the Community Development Committee in January. Um, nothing in this resolution prevents CPED staff from working on that. In fact, they have already been working on that, as has the Sustainability Office. So there isn't an allocation of money required at this time. There hasn't even been anything passed through the Council, and when it is, the committee needs to meet and determine kind of what their plan is. Uh, so nothing in this motion would prevent that from moving forward through the council, nor would you need a budget allocation to have any staff members working on the Green Zone Initiative should it pass. I will note with regard to this particular program, this is a partnership between MCTC, the Minneapolis Community and Technical College, as well as um, Hennepin County Technical College and Roosevelt High School. This is a welding specific program. DEED has uh, allocated a fairly large grant to the Technical College in order to provide equipment to train Minneapolis youth in welding and construction trades, but there isn't a location in the city where this equipment can be located. So this funding would provide for um, a partnership between MCTC, the, the community college, and Roosevelt to be able to locate this equipment at a location where Minneapolis public school students will be able to use it. It's one-time money, uh, and so it's not an ask for an ongoing allocation, um, and it seems like an opportunity with regard to youth job training, especially as it pertains to Roosevelt. Councilmember Bender. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, given the stage that the Green Zones work is at with, um, again, not passing, so the work group that I think will likely pass the council early next year hasn't um, even passed the council yet, nor has it formed. So it seems to me that a Green Zones budgetary item is probably more appropriate for next year. Um, I know a little bit about this program and what I know about it. I think it's a good program and a good investment. I'm curious about the $8,000 for the Midtown Safety Center, and I just, I wondered if that request was coming from the MPD or why it didn't go through sort of the normal MPD budget process or what that, it's a kind of a, I mean, it's, it's a small amount of money, but on the other hand, it's a very specific amount of money. Is it for something specific? Um, Again, I can answer to this. This, 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 this safety center has existed before my time. And uh, the former council member that represented Ward 6 actually funded this, uh, this project. They, they ran out of money and uh, the Midtown neighborhood organization actually asked for this. Again, this is something that is valuable to the communities there. The neighborhood organizations, including four neighborhood organizations, have been asking for it. And it's $8,000. That was something that has been happening that I think we should support as well. So again, this is where we could find that money. Again, I support the green zone, but just like my colleague said, 
we, you know, it's not necessary at this time, and we need these two projects, and I would like your support on it. Councilmember Gordon. Thank you, Madam President. I appreciate the uh, support for the green zones. I, my opinion uh, differs a little bit. I, I think this money um, could be used. It could be used to help provide some research and technical support. Green zone is something new to the city that we've never done. So I appreciated that the mayor put some money in the budget to support this work because I think it's something that we have to move into carefully and it could be significant or it could be nothing. I'm, I'm very hopeful that it's also going to pass the council the first cycle. Um, I'm picking up just based on the comment so far that this money could potentially be reallocated. It's sounding like it's going to be, and I, I admit that these are other good things as well. So this is a difficult one. It's kind of a gray area. There's some good things over here. There's this thing that could be good, but we're not quite sure where it's going to go. Um, I'm going to vote to keep uh, reserve that money for green zones, but that doesn't mean that I also don't support um, these um, employment training efforts that we're doing and future funding. And I look forward to working with my colleagues, even if they don't support the green zone money this time, maybe coming back next year and, and uh, seeing, seeing what we can do to make more out of that. Council Member Glidden. Thanks, Madam Chair. Well, you know, I, I appreciate the motion. I will say if this had been a motion that had been made at budget markup and I had had an opportunity to ask the <laughs> questions and, and go through that process, I probably would have supported it. At this point, it's not that I think that the, proposal of where to move the, the money is, is bad. I just don't have a chance to ask the fire chief, do you have capacity to use this extra money? Is it going to go to good use? I want to know that. And, you know, I trust the fire chief. I think he actually has a great program, so I, I appreciate that. I also have questions about the Midtown Safety Center. I actually represented a neighborhood that this safety center served for eight years. I'm very familiar with the funding history. This allocation actually makes me a little concerned um, because it's very high. Uh, for the safety center in terms of the money the city traditionally has put in there and kind of makes me wonder where all the partners have gone. And again, so this is more about how we're prepping up the sustainability of, of, of things like this. And so, um, I, I appreciate it. It's not a knock on the motion, uh, but exactly the kind of thing I probably would have supported if it had been made a budget markup. Councilmember Cano. Thank you. Uh, Madam President, I just wanted to say as the uh, council member representing the Midtown Safety Center that they have not come forward to ask me for funding for this particular project. And I just want to state that for the public record because I know that um, you're bringing that up and, and I'm glad that whoever spoke to you spoke to you. It's unfortunate that they never made it um, in my direction um, as the elected official from that area. Um, I will say that the um, the LA City uh, City Council passed a green zones policy uh, this week, and they are uh, making um, a great impact on on their communities when it comes to cleaning up the air, empowering the people of the neighborhoods to really um, organize again and and lift up their voices around environmental justice, addressing environmental racism in their communities. Um, and lastly, I just I just feel so. Um, trapped by this game where people of color have to compete against one another for resources. I think that's a false paradigm that we have to challenge, and I think that there is enough for everybody to go around, and I just don't believe in this, like, let's put, you know, youth training programs for Roosevelt High School students against their own families who live in the Phillips neighborhood who can't breathe and are developing asthma. So I disagree with that, and I and I wish you had worked with me to figure out a better solution for this. <laughs> Councilmember Andrew Johnson. Uh, thank you, Madam President. So uh, I want to share, echo the sentiment of some of my colleagues. You know, I think that this is a great program. The Community Explorers yeah. Program is excellent. I want to see more money uh, go into it. I also believe strongly in green zones uh, and making sure we have allocations there to fund that effort. Um, and I wish I would have known about this particular uh, motion sooner because I had the fire chief in my office a couple of days ago and he did not mention a need for more money for this. He was actually very excited about what's already going on. And, and I acknowledge that this, that, that this benefits Ward 12 because Roosevelt is there and I care deeply about our students in 
uh, in the community, and I want to see them have this opportunity. And so if it passes, it's a great opportunity for the students or a further opportunity, but I, I it's one of those tough choices. I won't be supporting it uh, because I do want to support the green zone funding, but I hope we can find more funding for this program in future allocations. And I appreciate that, um, you know, there is a strong interest for these kind of programs and uh, supporting them. Any further discussion on Council Member Warsami and Yang's amendment? Seeing none, clerk call the roll. Council Member Gordon. No. Kano. No. Wright. Aye. Bender. No. Glidden. No. Yang. Aye. Johnson. No. Quincy. Aye. Warsami. Aye. Goodman. Aye. Fry. Aye. Palmasano. Aye. President Johnson. Aye. There are eight ayes and five nays. That uh, amendment passes. Um, Council Member Andrew Johnson. Thank you, Madam President. I'd like to uh, make a motion, uh, staff directive in front of you with uh, Council Member Yang. Uh, this staff directive, I'll, I'll read it and then I'd like to speak to it. The directive is uh, directing the city coordinator's office to work with pertinent staff to create a racial equity website aimed at both external and internal stakeholders that will, one, create a central repository of best practices for city staff to use in defining policy and procedures through a racial equity lens, including racial equity work in other jurisdictions, locally and nationally, to foster learning and to build upon lessons learned by others tackling similar challenges. Two, provide training and other self-study resources to aid staff in deepening individual understanding of cultural intelligence, race, and equity. Three, promote existing city equity efforts to enable enterprise level collaboration and sharings of lesson, or sharing of lessons learned. Four, providing access to department level and citywide racial equity plans as available. Five, create a dashboard of progress against department level goals for racial equity and inclusion. And six, provide access to data that residents can use to explore equity related issues. Councilmember Johnson uh, has moved the staff directive. Would you like to speak to it? I would, thank you. Okay. Um, I'm happy to bring this forward. This is something that I worked with uh, the city coordinator's office on that they are uh, supportive of that will uh, really help address something that's frequent. I get uh, asked the question a lot from constituents, what are you working on around racial equity? And I speak to what I'm working on, but there's a whole lot that the city is working on in terms of initiatives. And I think having a central repository where we can have transparency around that, and then also uh, not only talk about timelines and what the specific outcomes are, but to actually have the follow-up where residents can go and see, okay, what happened from this initiative? What are the results? How much progress are we making? It's uh, incredibly important to have that transparency and that accountability. And uh, that's why I support the motion and hope all of you do as well. Councilmember Gordon. Thank you very much. And I think that this motion is uh, consistent with a lot of the work that uh, I've been trying to do for a couple of years and I appreciate it. And I will support this. The one, the one thought I have looking at this, because it, it, it's reminiscent of, I mean, this is creating a website, so there'll be a tool that everybody can go to and see, and I think that's a great um, idea. Um, one of the things that um, I have learned, sometimes it helps with staff directions, if we put a timeline on it or when we expect this to be done or at least to get a report back. And so um, I don't know if you had a chance to talk to the city coordinator's office about um, what was reasonable or even IT about and getting this kind of work done, but something to think about if we could at least expect to get something the second quarter of next year or report back at the end of the first quarter on the progress. I think it would give us some reassurance and then we could um, help hold ourselves accountable. I think we even heard at the public hearing about one staff direction we gave about um, ex ex the downtown East Commons and, and the uh, agreement we had and how we gave a staff direction and that and sometimes they just, even when we have a deadline, it doesn't come back. So um, I don't, I'm not prepared to propose a deadline right now, but I'm talking for a little while longer so that maybe the authors can think about what they heard back from the coordinator and what they think might be reasonable to put a deadline on that. But I'd like to support this and I'd like to see the work get done quickly. And then it's something we can certainly build upon and, and, and work on. Councilmember Goodman. Uh, thank you, Madam President. Uh, this did not come up in the budget markup. 
Uh, I talked to Councilmember Andrew Johnson as late as yesterday, and he did not mention it to me. But I think it's a great thing to do, and I completely support it. And there are often times when we get <coughs> feedback from people about the importance of doing things, and we do them. It doesn't always follow a neat process. So I, I'm, I don't want it to be, well, if it's something I like, it has to be in advance, and if it's something you like, it doesn't. I think this is a good thing to do. I also completely agree with Councilmember Gordon. For this to be meaningful at all, it has to have a timeline for a report back um, so that it just doesn't get lost in the shuffle of staff directions, and I'm open to whatever timeline the authors would like. Councilmember Yang. Um, thank you, Madam President. Um, my first comment is, you know, with regards to this racial equity work that we've been doing, um, I, I think it's time to bring it out of the dark. And so the transparency that uh, Councilmember uh, Johnson is talking about uh, makes a lot of sense. And um, I'm going to offer friendly amendments, um, hopefully, uh, with uh, Councilmember Johnson's approval that um, I, I just want to add the language uh, directing the city coordinator's office to work with pertinent staff to create a racial equity website by the third quarter of 2016. So that's a new language on there aimed at all the things that you know, are here. And so just the third quarter of 2016 to uh, give us a report or to be done with the website by then. Councilmember Yang has um, added an amendment to the to, uh, to the staff direction for a report by the third quarter of 2016. Any any discussion on that? Seeing none, all in approval say aye. 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 Opposed? That carries back to the amendment then. Councilmember Fry. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. I, I share uh, uh, Councilmember Goodman's sentiment that this is an, an excellent amendment. Uh, it, it wasn't introduced earlier, but these, this process, as she said, is sometimes messy. And, uh, you know, as we talk about, um, obviously there is at times a, a, a serious communications gap between our communities and what we're doing here at City Hall. And my hope is that this uh, this website, which I'm assuming will be part of the city's overarching website, but just kind of a separate tab, um, will facilitate some of that engagement. So hopefully the next time around that when we're doing this budget process, this uh, Nouveau website will uh, will help. Councilmember Glidden. Thank you, uh, Madam Chair. Just a couple things I'll say kind of give confidence uh, to this idea. One is I'll say it doesn't have a budget allocation attached to it. Um, it's a staff direction. Second is it's an item that has been in the work plan or the communications department for some time. And so I do appreciate Councilmember Johnson kind of taking an action to prod that work forward and make sure that it happens. And so I think that's another thing that uh, makes it familiar. Thank you. Any further discussion on the amendment? Seeing none, clerk call the roll. Councilmember Gordon. Aye. Cano. Aye. Reich. Aye. Bender. Aye. Glidden. Aye. Yang. Aye. Johnson. Aye. Quincy. Aye. Warsami. Aye. Goodman. Aye. Fry. Aye. Palmasano. Aye. President Johnson. Aye. There are 13 ayes. <laughs> that amendment is adopted. Uh, Councilmember Fry, you had an amendment? Thank you, Madam President. Uh, yes, I do, and the, uh, the amendment is to direct city staff to identify and reallocate a vacant FTE in the, uh, to the Office of City Clerk for an analyst position to provide management policy and fiscal support to the City Council and its committees, and if I may speak briefly on this item. Why don't you go ahead? And this is also a fairly last-minute item as well, but as seeing some of the issues that uh, we on the Council were going through in the last couple of days, I do feel that it would be exceedingly helpful to have uh, financial, uh, fiscal, and, and policy support um, um, from someone that would be specifically devoted to the council. Um, I feel like it would decrease uh, the number of miscommunications that we're having internally, uh, and I felt he'll feel that it will ultimately improve the policy that emanates from the council itself. Uh, okay, Councilmember Fries um, made his amendment. Councilmember Gordon has seconded. Uh, Councilmember Glidden. Thanks, uh, Madam Chair. Um, well, I, I had uh, several questions about this one. Um, I thought actually the clerk had all of its um, requested budget items uh, funded in the mayor's budget. I may have not remembered that correctly, but so I'll maybe look to both the clerk and the mayor. Um, I'd like to know if this was a requested position that wasn't funded and if we could hear a little bit more about that. The second one is it's just 
worded maybe a little bit unusually, um, and I'm not sure what it means to identify a vacant position. It doesn't identify, it doesn't say where the vacant position would be taken from. Is this like an enterprise wide request? I don't know if Ms. Christensen has seen the motion. You have not seen the motion. We're happy to take a look at mine, but we need, uh, help reviewing the motion. I just, and the question to you is I want to make, I want to understand, I don't, I'm not sure I understand what that means. It's, I mean, if there's vacant positions, they're allocated for our departments to fill. I, I'm, I'm just a little bit unclear unless there's a vacant position in the clerk's office within, and if, and if so, then the clerk has the ability to fill that position. Um, Council President Johnson, Council Vice President Glidden, and other council members, typically when a position is uh, to be reallocated, there's a uh, definition of where it's reallocated from and where it's reallocated to. It's not clear specifically in this motion that where the vacant position would be currently budgeted. Um, each department that has a position allocated to it has a budget associated with that position. So uh, identifying where the vacancy uh, exists would be necessary in order to reallocate the position as well as the dollars associated with that position. Uh, and, that, and certainly there are at any given point in time uh, within the city vacant positions across the board, any number of functions. Um, so I'm not exactly clear on where it might come from that, that could possibly be identified later. Thank you. Councilmember Gordon. So um, I wonder if this is something we could do later when we do when we see if there's some rollover funds or something like that and we could talk about this position more. Maybe this is a little bit um, premature since we haven't identified it seems like the positions. That's just a thought that I have. Councilmember Bender. Thank you, Madam President. I guess I'm a little confused because, um, okay, so this seems to be an ongoing FTE in the clerk's office, and therefore, if we were taking an FTE from another department, wouldn't that be an ongoing position that had been eliminated? So, so you're saying we need to identify which position in the city enterprise would be eliminating exactly. in order to support an ongoing new position within the clerk's office. And then I'm not sure I've totally heard what the the position description is. Uh, Council President Johnson, Council Member Bender, a reallocation of a position means that a position in one department is gone in lieu of adding it elsewhere. So it, I guess that there would need to be um, an identification of which department was going to no longer have a position in order to reallocate it to the city clerk. Council Member Goodman. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Um, there are numerous cities, including the city of St. Paul, that have council support for policy and fiscal analysis. We do not have that. Um, and so it, it's very difficult for folks who are working on big picture policy issues, and that might be anyone here, um, to get information they need that is not biased or spun in one direction or another. We used to have the Management Analysis Division, I think only Council President Johnson and I remember that, which was an independent um, uh, department within the city that did analysis uh, on policy positions, especially as it pertains to the budget. It's become very obvious that um, some of the information we get is um, spun in one direction or another, and we think we need someone in the clerk's office to be doing some budget analysis, but also policy analysis on various different kinds of policy issues that come forward. Personally, for me, I would take it out of the rollover contingency for one year, see how it goes, and then uh, ask for permanent FTE next time. So that might be a more or less comfortable position. I thought I heard Council Member Gordon say perhaps it was part of the rollover. Um, uh, uh, so I, I'm supportive of doing it as part of the rollover or contingency for year one and see if we um, can model a position like they have in the city of St. Paul for their city council like they have in Seattle 
uh, or many other cities that have similar policy positions. I think some of these departments have more than one. The suggestion here was just to have one and see what the workload was. Councilmember Glidden. Thanks, um, Madam Chair. Um, you know, it's it's an interesting idea. I will say to me, it needs a lot more uh, prepping up. It seems more appropriate to propose for next year's budget. I don't even understand how this would qualify for rollover, actually. Um, it's a new idea, and those are usually not the kinds of things that go for the rollover dollars under our financial policies. Um, I think there are a lot of questions, too, about just what kind of position and is it needed. I don't think that St. Paul Council staff have the same staff allocations that we do, and so we're kind of going to get into that back and forth. Who would the person report to? How are they going to allocate their time? Is this a lawyer? Uh, because if the person is doing policy analysis, I know our city attorney might have concern about when you're seeming to give a legal opinion, is that something where the person that needs to work with the city attorney's office? So anyway, just started to throw out a bunch, but I do think it's an idea that is, is worth more thought, but then that means it needs more thought and might be more appropriate for next year's budget. Councilmember Fry. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. All fair points from, from all of my colleagues. Uh, uh, the, the purpose of leaving it some, somewhat ambiguous was allowing staff to then come forward uh, with ideas, whether it be from rollover, which as Councilmember Glidden states is difficult, or contingency funding, which could be funded through the contingency funding at, at whatever figure it is for this year, and then we can evaluate how the position has functioned for the following. Um, and, you know, as I said, you know, dealing with some of these issues at, at a last minute time, time frame is, is actually a, a reason why this would work well, uh, but all points are taken from my colleagues. Any further discussion on Councilmember Fry's amendment? No. Seeing none, oh, clerk, call the roll. Oh, I'm sorry, Councilmember Bender. Did I'm sorry? Maybe this is too much. Did we identify the FTE that we're cutting in order to to do this? Uh, Councilmember Bender, we could ask staff to uh, come back to us with a list of. Uh, vacant positions if that was something that the council would like to consider and identify it. We also could use uh, one-time dollars, as people have suggested, um, to fund this position. Okay. doesn't need to be decided today. Right. Any further discussion? Seeing none, clerk, call the roll. Council Member Gordon. No. Kano. No. Reich. Aye. Bender. No. Glidden. No. Yang. Aye. Johnson. Aye. Quincy. Nay. Borsami. Aye. Goodman. Aye. Fry. Aye. Palmasano. Aye. President Johnson. Aye. There are eight ayes and five nays. That's Quincy. amendment passed. Any further amendments? Seeing none, the clerk will call. I'm sorry, one more. Sorry. Uh, that I do believe uh, Councilmember uh, Reich has amendment on uh, Ms. Christensen, if you can help me, on the uh, capital program, so we should deal with that amendment during the capital program, right? I'm sorry. I think I'm right. Yeah. Is it, uh, Mr. Carl, Mr. Carl, uh, we have a... Amendment for the capital program, so we should deal with that during the capital program, correct? Okay. With that, we have uh, dispensed with the uh, appropriation resolution as amended, so the clerk will call the roll on the adoption of the resolution fixing, I'm sorry, Councilmember Goodman or Sami? Councilmember Warsami? Yeah, I, I want to speak on the main motion, okay. and um, I have comments regarding some of the things have been said today, which I, you know, I support the community coming out. I support what everybody said. And, um, and, I, and I don't believe there is any place for racism and any place for white supremacy and any place for bigotry. And we've seen even in the news today, a man who's running for the president of the United States wants to bar uh, a world religion from entering the United States. You know, Donald Trump's white supremacy is, you know, it's, it's one of the most, amazing things I've ever seen in my entire life. And I have lived in many different places and many different areas. I was a refugee. I have been an immigrant. I am black and I am Muslim and I am poor. And my father never left me anything and my family never left me anything. And everything that I have earned, I have earned through hard work and through being where I am. Now, when I came to City Hall, 
When I came to City Hall, my priority for my constituents, from the people who elected me, was jobs, jobs, and jobs. It was the poverty in my community that has inspired me to be here and to come to this office. And we are legislators. We make legislation. That is our job. And some of my colleagues have spoken a great game. They've talked about equity, but they have not presented much in terms of legislation. In this 2016 budget, and I will thank the mayor who put these recommendations that I put through for my constituents, for my ward, and for the inner city, young, black, and colored individuals who live in our city, including my children. I have put forth a number of recommendations that I would like you to pass today. One is the creation of an opportunity hub to be created in Cedar Riverside. What does an opportunity hub mean? It means a hub where young men and women from my community can go so they can be trained. It's not a workforce center, it's a skills development center. It has never been created before and we're partnering with the county. We're partnering with the state. I've knocked on the state's door. I've knocked on the county's door. And what I've asked for is the creation of this center so that my youth, the youth who elected me, whose parents knocked on doors for me, who raised money for me, can be trained. And this is a promise that I made them when I ran for office. Why? Because unemployment in Minneapolis, in Hennepin County, for white Americans is 4 to 3%. And for my community, is 22%. And this is what I'm tackling through legislation, not through rhetoric, through legislation, the creation of this hub. And the mayor worked with me to appropriate $100,000 as a seed money for the hub. The county's putting money in, MCTC's putting money in, the state is putting money in, and hopefully we'll get this off the ground. The second thing is my ward is 85% renters, 85% renters. And we have problems with landlords and tenants' rights. And we put $100,000, again, to Homeline, and I'm supporting this. And my colleague, Lisa Bender, also helped me with this last year to tackle this issue. We've also put down $20,000 for community education program, targeted at East African elders, seniors. We've also put down $50,000 for youth development for targeting the Somali community for a 4-H program, for after-school program that develops the STEM, especially maths, in our youths. And about 30 youths will be able to benefit from this. We put $42,000 for the program that I mentioned at Roosevelt High that my colleagues were talking about. Yes, Roosevelt High is in World 12, but many students are from World 6. We also put $20,000 for the first time a public awareness program for autism, again, targeting the Somali community because we have a high rate of autism program. We have a high rate of autism issues. We also put $20,000 for a public works bike, bike ped education. We have all these <coughs> infra bike infrastructure in Minneapolis, but many people from my community don't, haven't had the training. So we put that down as well. And we've and I also supported Council Member Goodman's amendment to increase the affordable housing to $10 million for 2016. So again, we are legislators. We will be measured on what we legislate, what goodies we can bring to our constituencies, and how we are dealing with the needs that they have through our elections. And this is what I've tried to do to the best of my ability, is to legislate and to present actual programs that tackle the unemployment and underemployment in my community. Actual programs, not theoretical issues, but actual programs that develop the skills that allows individuals to get into programs. Another thing that I'm working on and I work hard for is to defend small business. My community is one of the largest creators of small business in the city of Minneapolis. And we know there are legislations coming such as scheduling and other legislations that could harm these small businesses. And I have to be attentive to them. Because if these small businesses go out of business, if these grocery stores, the halal grocery stores, and the restaurants get out of business, I don't think the city of Minneapolis is going to employ all those people that will be unemployed. So again, my decisions are made with the lens of my constituencies, 
with the lens of World 6, providing jobs, protecting small business, making sure that we create enough, enough wealth that we become homeowners and we become part of this society. And that's what I fight for, and that's why I support this budget and the recommendations made. Thank you very much. Councilmember Cano. Thank you, Madam President. <clears throat> I want to thank the community for coming out tonight. I want to thank you for being here and changing the course of where these decisions were going to go tonight. Thank you. I used to I used to work for a council member, and I don't remember things being so tough back then. I'm in city council now. Things feel tough. But please know that we are in that friction, that space of friction that's creating the change that our ancestors have called for, that our communities are calling for. I know it's hard. I know it's tough, but we have to keep doing it. Please know that justice is on our side. Truth is on our side. Love is on our side. Thank you for being here. Thank you for sacrificing. Council member. Uh, I'm sorry, you're, you're, <laughs> Council member, Council member Andrew Johnson, Council member Andrew Johnson. Thank you, Madam President. I just uh, wanted to uh, say thanks for everyone who came out, uh, no matter what your opinions are. You know, we're not going to always agree with everything. We're going to agree with a lot of things. And uh, I just appreciate, though, that democracy can be uh, noisy and loud and and feisty and also incredibly important to moving our city and our community forward. And uh, I'm happy to be a part of uh, a couple of motions tonight on uh, racial equity. I know we have a lot more work to do. There's a lot of work underway, and I want to recognize a lot of that work is outside of City Hall and happening in the community, uh, whether that's our nonprofit organizations, whether that's just community members through their volunteering, through their work. I also really want to thank the mayor for uh, something in the budget, specifically uh, the uh, restorative justice is being tripled. And I want to recognize you for that and thank you for your partnership on that. It's incredible. Uh, incredible programs that are helping keep uh, kids who everyone makes mistakes keep their records uh, clean so that they don't get sucked into a system that just sets them up for failure uh, and makes life so hard and obviously with all the disparities with arrests and in records ultimately uh, is hurting uh, our people of color in our city so I think that's incredible work I'd love to see us do even more around that uh, and, uh, you know, I've said it before, and uh, and I maybe don't say it enough, but uh, I'll say it uh, again at this, after this, because of this process, but uh, Black Lives Matter. Thank you. Council Member Bender. Thank you, Madam President. Um, I think sometimes, I also wanted to thank everyone who came to speak and, um, and I think sometimes these um, smaller changes in the scope of the billion dollar budget, they get a lot of attention. And and um, I think sometimes we seem more divided as a body than we really are. And so I just wanted to say that this budget, a, a little more than a billion dollar budget, has a lot of things that I think really reflect um, the shared values of this council and our mayor. And I really want to thank Mayor Hodges uh, for her leadership in making significant investments in a lot of things that my constituents care a lot about. Um, this budget has a lot of investments in racial equity, a huge millions of dollars for restorative justice to reform our police department. It has $200,000 to enforce the uh, paid sick time ordinance that I hope we will pass uh, early next year. Um, demonstrating the support of this council, the real support of this council to make sure that that policy is meaningful and that it is enacted and enforced. It has investments in um, in our youth. It has a huge amount of investment in jobs trainings programs, which I hope will make a real difference in people's lives. And so I think there's a lot of good here. And I think there's a lot of good to build on within this budget. I can't not note as well that we haven't even really talked about bicycling and walking um, because it's become standard uh, in our budget that we now have, um, thanks to the leadership of uh, Transportation Chair Reich and the mayor, um, standalone funding for bicycle um, 
pedestrian safety improvements, and that is a new thing that, that didn't used to be the case, and it is now, and it's become just part of our normal budget process, and that's a, that's something that I think is, it makes a really big difference, too, in our neighborhoods and our communities. So I think there's a lot in this budget that's really great, a lot of things that I am really appreciative of, and a lot of things that we agree on. Councilmember Goodman. Uh, thank you, Madam President. I want to echo the words of my second Lisa uh, and say that I also agree with you completely that when you have a $1.3 billion budget and you're arguing over um, one half of 1% of it, uh, it says that there's a lot of shared values. There are five more items that we're going to vote on tonight. Uh, this item is not the last, but I do want to just say a few things. First of all, um, I want to thank Councilmember Quincy for chairing Ways and Means and Council President Johnson and Council Member Quincy for creating a process where everyone on the council gets to participate in the budget process, the budget hearings and the process itself. I think it was a really good change and I appreciated being included. I used to not attend because I couldn't participate and now I feel um, very empowered to participate. Um, I uh, am really happy about a number of the items that the mayor put forward in this budget. There's a lot of consensus on the issue I've spent most of my career on, which is affordable housing. Uh, we are in a position to fully fund our affordable housing trust fund to $10 million. And in addition to that, uh, we have a very good split of money going to areas of concentrated, racially concentrated poverty, and also trying to build affordable housing in areas that are not racially concentrated so that we can integrate neighborhoods and make sure that um, we can all uh, live together. It's actually Actually, a goal we met and we have met for the past five years was funding affordable housing in areas of not concentrated poverty, um, which I think says a lot. Millions of dollars go into that effort annually. We also have a good amount of money in housing now because of the mayor's efforts on family housing. We've noticed that we've had a real problem in the city with three bedroom units and not as much with one or two bedroom units. And there's a million dollar initiative mayors put forward um, on that issue. We also have quite a bit of money in our homelessness initiatives and council Member Quincy and I are working on a homeless youth project, Youth Link, and was in my ward, now in the fifth ward, um, and we have fully funded that, and are just waiting for some final approvals from the state. I'll note we spend over almost five million dollars, as I said, on workforce development and job training and youth employment activities in the city, and um, we are judged on the outcomes of those. Uh, I think in, in most cases we do fairly well, in some cases we don't, and when they're rated on an A through F scale and they get a C or lower, we don't renew their contracts. So we want to make sure when we put money into training a person in our community, they get trained and get a job and keep the job for a year, and um, we're very focused on that. So I think that um, this budget has a lot to like. Um, the only thing maybe I don't like is the levy increase, but I think there's a lot of other things within the budget that there are to like, and the money is going to really good places. This was a much better process than it had been in the past. I think it was more collegial and um, more productive as a result, and I um, give a lot of that credit to Councilmember Quincy, so thank you for leading us in this effort. Councilmember Gordon. Well, thank you very much. Um, I, I, uh, I'm going to support this budget, and I have to say that it's turned out a lot better than I expected that it might uh, when when the, this meeting began, and I really appreciate um, that. I think some of the last-minute tweaks that we made were okay, and I appreciate that. I also, though, just want to say that um, when we got the budget, there was a lot of stuff in there that I appreciated and I supported and I was excited about. I even tried to write a blog about it after we first got the budget and tried to come up with the top 10 best things about it. And I, I got stuck at about 24 because I just couldn't figure out where the top 10 were. And don't worry, I'm not going to tell you all of them, but uh, there were, there's some great things in there. And I will note, um, that I, I'm actually glad that we still kept our, uh, $200,000 in funding for our rollout of our working families agenda policy. I think that's significant. That shows we kept some commitment for that, and we can keep working forward on that. And I appreciate that it was there, and I appreciate that we were able to keep it there. Um, we also are, have a commitment to follow through on our uh, body cameras, and I know that's not an end-all, be-all to solve everything, but, um, boy, that could really help us in a lot of situations, and I think that's definitely significant, and it's a lot of money that we're investing in that. So I appreciate that, too. Um, and and um, we've got there's there's lots of other things too. I'm actually glad um, that we kept most of our money for the LED uh, streetlights. I know we talked about that a little bit, and we lost a little of that, but we're actually going to recover that money because we're going to save that then in our electric bill. And that's really a commitment we made as part of the Clean Energy Partnership that we're going to go out in front of our utilities and show them what we can do and lead in that area. And now we want to uh, make sure that we. Um, 
help hold them accountable to lead in their efforts so that we can also address um, some larger global issues that are out there. So anyway, um, I'll be voting for, for the budget and next year I'll be hoping that we have more of this stuff out in front of us sooner so we can figure it out and make it a little more harmonious for the home stretch. Councilmember Glidden. Thanks, Madam Chair. Um, well, I too wanted to say just a few comments in support of this budget. Um, I appreciate that my colleagues have been pointing out um, what just some of the things that are in this budget because again, this it's a it's a big budget. It's a 1.3 billion dollar budget, and uh, I would be interested in kind of doing a little bit more nitpicking into the budget with the community and talking about some of those programs. And so um, I just want to put that invitation out there that I'm willing uh, to do that. I know many of my colleagues do that as well. Um, I actually uh, often kind of uh, bring bring different motions around the budget. I, I didn't this year, um, mainly because I thought there were some good motions that some of my colleagues were bringing that accomplished some of the goals that I thought were important, like bringing the Affordable Housing Trust Fund up to $10 million. I thought that was a good thing. And I thought there were a lot of good things in this budget. Some of my colleagues have mentioned those things. Um, I think the um, as Councilmember Gordon has talked about, um, the Clean Energy Partnership is one of these really big uh, innovative reform issues that was driven by the community and now is a partnership with the city and the utilities and we are continuing to invest in how that's going to create change in the city. Uh, Councilmember Warsami talked about um, renters' rights issues. One of the things we haven't talked about is how the community for years has asked for more housing inspectors that would work on multifamily housing, and that is in this budget. So just another example of, of something that um, is here. Also, we've talked about reform, criminal justice reform items that are funded in this budget, and we have not talked about uh, some of the items that are in the city attorney's budget, not just in the police department's budget. The city attorney is part of the criminal justice system, and uh, she has been trying to think of ideas, working with the community on how to create um, some reform items. And so I'm really excited about some of those ideas as well. So my support to my budget, um, thank you to my colleagues for their work and engagement around the budget, and thank you to the community for coming here, staying. I mean, it's like 20 to 11, and uh, we have a full house here, so I want to say thank you. This shows the commitment of the community to staying in touch with what happens in the city. <laughs> Sorry I mentioned it was 20 to 11, but... Madam Mayor. And we're just getting started. Madam Mayor. Thank you, Madam President. And I know that you all still have your capital budget to vote on, and I know what it's like to have these long nights, but it seemed like um, the bulk of the comments about the budget are being made now, and I didn't want to not chime in. Um, I first wanted to say a thank you uh, to everybody who came tonight and who testified and who spoke on anything, but mostly and including um, um, issues of equity, issues of police community relationships, any of those issues, I appreciate that people came out and spoke, that there are high profile days and there are low profile days in doing the work of equity and doing the work of making sure that we are one city. <laughs> um, today was a high profile day, but I hope that the work that went into the budget, um, the hours spent with uh, community, the hours spent with colleagues, the hours spent with our departments um, are are evidence that on every day, even the low profile days, I am doing that work, the city is doing that work, and we jointly have a commitment to making sure that we, uh, that in Minneapolis, your race uh, or your zip code do not determine your life outcomes, that we can't predict anything uh, negative, certainly about your life, by your zip code. That's what this budget is, and that's what this budget is about. Day after day, week after week, month after month, year after year, doing the hard work necessary, not just to change things, but to transform things. And we talked about that this morning when we talked about the national initiative, which uh, I appreciate the folks who came out for that, and I appreciate that folks had an opportunity to hear about what the national initiative is. Um, and the commitment that we've had, again, on the low-profile days, the commitment to the national initiative is just as strong as the high-profile days, because we have been talking about it and working on it all year long. And so the, 
you know, the, the comments and the, and the protest and all of that tonight have been an invitation for us to think about the, the investments we're making in our city and the investments that we are making in equity. And we all, I think I speak for everybody on the dais, value that people came out and value the opinions and the input and that the actions taken tonight and the actions not taken tonight reflect that we value that input and reflect that we value what we hear from the community. And other, and council members have mentioned this, but there's a lot, uh, in this budget that wasn't even an issue tonight, that wasn't a, a matter of debate. There's a lot in this budget about making sure the city runs well. I think there's no better testament to that than the capital budget, uh, discussion that's about to happen. Um, that there is, uh, millions of dollars about fostering growth, including hundreds of thousands of dollars to support small business and to support minority and women owned small business in particular. The sustainability investments, the clean energy partnership agreement, but also work on lead poisoning and asthma. Uh, those are investments that are made in this budget and those are differential uh, problems faced uh, in the city that people of color, people in North Minneapolis are more likely to, to struggle with asthma uh, and to um, have houses that are danger for lead poisoning than other parts of the city and we make investments there. And there are millions of dollars in equity investment in this budget, tripling the restorative justice money, as Councilmember Johnson uh, pointed out, uh, municipal criminal justice reform that we have been talking about that is invested in the budget, um, word gap program, the first, uh, the first opportunity gap a kid faces is are they getting the brain development they need in that first three years of life. 80% of brain development happens in that first three years. We can make our kids smarter by talking to them and we're going to be investing in that. There's uh, $680,000 additional dollars for workforce programs specifically for people of color. Uh, there's, and, and on top of that, the, the dollars for the firefighter recruitment program, which is designed to make sure that our fire department, uh, rep you know, reflects the community that they serve, but also is a pilot program for how can we make this work? How can we give people an, an imagination for jobs at the city across the city? Earn sick and safe and support for enforcement of that, which is in the budget. We have $1.2 million in uh, investment in the body cam, uh, which has moved forward, which has been a commitment of mine long time. Uh, as I said, high profile days and low profile days. This is the work of the city that I'm doing and that I'm doing with my colleagues. And the early intervention system. And now, uh, thank you very much tonight for increased dollars for training so we can make sure that our participation in the national initiative is completely funded uh, for 2016. And then more dollars for housing, more dollars for affordable housing and particularly housing for large families. These are the things that I have been talking about and others have been talking about day in and day out. These are the things that I've been talking about and folks have been talking about day in and day out for the last two years. This is my work. This is the work of the city. I appreciate council members, the uh, care and consideration you've given to the budget and the amendments that you've made on your care and consideration for the work of the city. Thank you for your support of what's in this budget tonight. Um, and, uh, of course, there's more to come, but I appreciate very much what you've done. Thank you. That, uh, clerk will call the roll on the adoption of the resolution fixing the maximum amounts to be expended by departments in fiscal year 2016, paid by taxes and fees. Mm -hmm. Clerk, clerk will call the roll. Council member clerk Gordon. Will call the roll. Aye. Cano. Right. Bender. Aye. Glidden. Aye. Yang. Aye. Johnson. Aye. Goodman. Prime. Aye. Pomisano. Aye. Clerk, call the, continue the roll call. Council Member Connor. Yes. President Johnson. Aye. There are 13 ayes. Budget is adopted. Next order of business is the proposed five year capital improvement program. Councilmember Quincy, will you please present that report? Madam President, I move adoption of a resolution adopting the city's 
four-year capital improvement program covering fiscal years 2016 to 2020. Councilmember Quincy has moved uh, the adoption of the 2016 to 2020 capital improvement program. Is there any discussion on the motion? Are there any amendments? Councilmember Wright. Uh, thank you, Madam President. I uh, move to amend the 2016 capital improvement uh, appropriation resolution by reducing the appropriation in the Public Works Department for the Vineland Place paving redesign by 400,000 and reallocating that those dollars to the Public Works Department for the Concrete Streets Rehabilitation Program. Councilmember Reich has moved the motion that's in front of you to amend the capital uh, improvement appropriation resolution uh, by reducing the appropriation in the Public Works Department for the Vineland Place paving redesigned by 400,000 and reallocating 400,000 to the Public Works Department for the Concrete Streets Rehabilitation Program. Any discussion on that amendment? Councilmember Wright. Uh, thank you, Madam President. Uh, this, this is uh, motivated not by any demerit to the project proposal, but just an insistence that it goes through our typical capital review process, particularly that part of the process that vets things with the lens to a need-based allocation and prioritization. And so I just wanted to express that uh, motivation behind the motion. So Any further discussion? So anyway, um, so I just want to let y'all know that the six hundred and five uh, thousand dollars that was going to be allocated to police and this watch. <laughs> Sir. Okay. A uh, clerk will call the roll on Councilmember Reich's amendment. Oh. Councilmember Gordon. Uh, no. Cano. No. Reich. Aye. Bender. No. Glidden. Aye. Yang. Aye. Johnson. Aye. Quincy. Nay. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, aye. Warsami. Aye. Goodman. Aye. Fry. Aye. Palmasano. Aye. President Johnson. Aye. There are 10 ayes and three nays. That amendment is passed. Any uh, any further amendments on the capital uh, program? Seeing none, clerk call the roll on the adoption of the 2016 to 2020 capital program. Councilmember Gordon. Aye. Cano. Aye. Reich. Aye. Bender. Aye. Glidden. Aye. Yang. Aye. Johnson. Aye. Quincy. Aye. Warsami. Aye. Goodman. Aye. Fry. Aye. Palmasano. Aye. President Johnson. There I'm sorry. There are 13 ayes. Uh, okay. The capital program has been adopted. Next, we have consideration of a resolution related to the issuance of 2016 capital improvement bonds to fund the various projects included in the capital improvement program. Councilman <clears throat> Quincy. Uh, thank you, Madam President. Um, the budget subcommittee is forwarding four resolutions for adoption, which authorize the issuance of city bonds in various amounts to finance projects included in the city's 2016 capital improvement program. Uh, did I already do this? And I, I read the this wrong is, one. This is, bonds. this is the bonds. This is the bonds. Issued bonds so in both board of estimate. Number four. For your capital improvement, uh, if I could get help from uh, Mr. Carl, am I on the uh, uh, Madam President, resolution? Council Member Quincy, I think we're on page eight of the prepared script. It's um, the right. proposed 2016 capital improvement bond, which is um, forwarding resolutions for adoption that would authorize the issuance of city bonds for various amounts to finance projects that have been included in the 2016 capital improvement program. That's right. I move approval of all four resolutions or the bond program. Is that correct? 
it, Councilmember it, it, Quincy is moving uh, the resolutions for adoption, which authorize the issuance of city bonds in various amounts to finance projects included in the city's 2016 capital improvement program. That's right. Any further discussion on that motion? Seeing none, uh, clerk, call the roll. Councilmember Gordon. Aye. Connor. Aye. Wright. Aye. Yeah. Bender. Aye. Glidden. Aye. Yang. Aye. Johnson. Aye. Quincy. Aye. Warsami. Aye. Goodman. Aye. Fry. Aye. Palmasano. Aye. President Johnson. Aye. There are 13 ayes. That motion carries. Final agenda item relates to utility rates to be effective January 1st, 2016. Councilmember Quincy, would you please present the committee's report? Okay, Madam President, I move adoption of the resolution setting rates uh, for municipal utility services, including water, sewer, solid waste, and recycling, all of which become effective January 1, 2016. Councilmember Quincy has moved the adoption of the resolution designating utility rates for various municipal services to become effective January 1, 2016. Is there any discussion on that motion? Seeing none, uh, clerk call the roll on the designation of utility rates for water, sewer, solid waste, and recycling services to become effective January 1st, 2016. Council Member Gordon. <coughs> Aye. Kano. Aye. Reich. Aye. Bender. Aye. Glidden. Aye. Yang. Aye. Johnson. Aye. Quincy. Aye. Warsami. Aye. Goodman. No. Fry. Aye. Palmasano. Aye. President Johnson. Uh, I on all except the solid waste and recycling services. I would vote nay. There are 12 ayes on the report uh, for all items except for, and one nay on the entire report, two nays on the report as it relates to solid waste and recycling. That motion carries. With that, colleagues, uh, we have concluded our business for the evening, and with no further business to conduct, I would entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Yes. Moved and seconded. All in approval say aye. 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 Opposed? That carries. We are adjourned. Thank you very much. What? Aye.